hello everyone. This is our eighth conditional use hearing, January 26th. So we will begin. I am the chair of West Town Township, Carol DeWolf. Along with me are um, both the vice chair, Scott Yaw, and the police commissioner, Richard Pomerantz. We have John Alchel here, our township manager. We have Pat McKenna, our solicitor. And we have the Creevilly Toll Conditional Use uh, Associated folks, as well as our township residents and interested um, citizens. So on behalf of West Town, um, our board, its management and staff, I welcome you all this evening, um, along with Greg Edelman and Toll. Um, by now, you know that we are doing this by Zoom. It is not our preference, but we actually need to do that still. So we will be operating by Zoom, and we have a helper, Mila Robinson, this evening. Um, and as you know, when we get to the public comment portion, Pat will go over that as to how to raise your hand and speak during this process. With that said, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you join me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'm gonna turn this over to Pat. Thank you, Carol, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the continued conditional use hearing for the Craybilly Farm Tract. This is the continued hearing from December 16th of 2020. The township is recording the hearing for assisting with the preparation of the transcript only. The recording will be destroyed after the transcript is complete. I have been informed that Mindy Rhodes is recording the hearing this evening. And we will ask a little bit later if anybody else is recording the proceeding. As with the prior hearings, uh, the proceeding this evening will mirror as closely as possible the process for an in-person hearing for conditional use. Uh, Toll has completed their case in chief and the Planning Commission has begun presenting their witnesses. When we were last convened, they had finished the direct examination of the township engineer Robert Flinchball, and we were going to begin this evening with cross-examination of Mr. Flinchball by all of the uh, remaining parties. I anticipate once Mr. Flinchball's testimony is complete, the Planning Commission intends to call John Snook to testify. He is the township planner. When asking your questions, uh, you will be recognized and asked to unmute. Uh, if you're on the phone, uh, phone this evening, please press star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute. Exhibits will be shown on the screen as witnesses testify uh, and they are all available on the township website for your uh, viewing pleasure. Our next hearing is scheduled for February 23rd at 7 p.m. and an additional hearing is scheduled for March 23rd. Uh, at 7 p.m. If you wouldn't mind, if you have not already done so this evening, please enter your names on the Zoom call to assist the township with properly identifying you when called upon. Please make sure you are in a quiet location and please speak up so that all may hear you. We ask that you all please remain on mute unless you are speaking to reduce extraneous noise and feedback. Public comment will commence at a future hearing date after all parties have concluded their presentations. As we have done in the past, it is anticipated that we will take a break from the hearing around 8 p.m. and conclude the proceeding around 9 p.m. Is there anyone else who is recording the proceeding this evening? If so, please raise your hand so that you can be identified. All right, I am not seeing anyone. So with that, I think we can be 
begin our proceeding tonight unless Mr. Edelman or Ms. Camp, you have anything that you want to discuss uh, before we get Mr. Flinchball back on the stand. I don't have anything. Okay. Mr. Flinchball, I'm going to remind you that you're still under oath from the prior proceeding. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Edelman to begin his cross-examination. Thanks, Pat. Uh, good evening, Bob. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I have a few questions based upon your prior testimony and your review letter. I um, wanted to first start dealing with uh, some of the details of the conditional use plan. In your um, preparation and your testimony, did you review Section 170-2009-B as a boy of the zoning ordinance, which governs the level of detail to be shown on a conditional use site plan? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that Section 2009-B-3 a of the zoning ordinance does not require detailed grading plans as part of the conditional use site plan? It does say, state that, yes. Okay. And isn't it true that Toll's conditional use site plan depicted a limit of disturbance or LOD line? Yes, it does. Okay. And isn't it true that an LOD line is used to depict the limits of where grading or other earth disturbance would occur? Yes based on the location of the LOD or limit of disturbance line on Toll's conditional use site plan, isn't it true that the conditional use plan does not depict the construction of any homes as encroaching into riparian buffers? Based upon the location of the LOD line, yes. Okay. And at the December conditional use hearing, uh, you testified that the importance of maintaining a riparian buffer is to, quote, promote ecological health and stream water quality benefits, including the removal of pollutants and sediment. Isn't that correct? That's correct. So would you agree with me that avoiding encroachments into the riparian buffer is important? It is important, yes. Okay. And in your opinion, is it important to construct proposed development in a manner so as to minimize encroachments into those riparian buffers? Yes. Uh, Section 2009B3A also does not require stormwater calculations, profiles, or similar engineering details to be included as part of the conditional use of site plan. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So based on that standard, aren't the majority of your stormwater management comments in your review letter, I believe this exhibit, B as a boy 61, really land development items? They are, however, uh, based upon the information that was provided, there were inconsistencies as a result of, of what was presented to us, and there were concerns that uh, the basins and shown may not have reflected uh, what they may ultimately reflect had they been uh, designed in accordance with ordinance standards. And is that level of detail something that you typically find during land development and not conditional use? Yes, however, in this case, because of the, uh, the existence of the riparian buffers and the proximity of the basins to those riparian buffers uh, and the fact that we have not been provided with uh, supporting data to, uh, to confirm that those basins are adequately sized, we can't confirm that uh, grading would not be required within the riparian buffer. So, Bob, in order to determine whether the basins are adequately sized, wouldn't you need a fully engineered stormwater plan together with additional stormwater calculations? Yes. Okay, and again, that's not something that Section 2009B requires, isn't that correct? Correct. Okay. And just to confirm, Toll's conditional use plan did show a preliminary method of managing and handling stormwater, is that correct? Yes, it did. Okay. And the plans and reports that were submitted in support of those um, preliminary methods for stormwater were submitted by a professional engineer licensed in Pennsylvania, is that correct? Yes, they were. I believe in your testimony you commented on the 
calculations for the townhome or multifamily density. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And if I characterize your testimony incorrectly, please let me know. I believe your testimony was that you didn't have sufficient information to confirm compliance with the density for the density calculations for the townhomes? That is correct. Okay. And if Toll's engineer were to supply you with additional details, would you be able to calculate the density calculations? Yes, I would. Are you aware that Toll previously supplied the same type of analysis to the prior engineer with respect to townhome density calculations? I do realize that it was that it was presented. I don't recall uh, seeing any comment related to what I had brought up in my, my testimony. Okay. And Prior to your testimony, had you issued any review letters with respect to requiring or needing additional clarification on the townhome density calculation? Not as part of a review letter, no. Okay. And is that also the same with respect to total impervious coverage for the townhome portions of the of the development? Correct. I I I. I I'm not sure I fully understand that that portion of the question. Well, are you aware that Toll calculated the total impervious coverage for the townhome portions of the development in the same manner as it did in the first conditional yes. use application? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, if Toll again supplied you with the additional uh, basis or methodology, you would then be able to confirm their calculations. I would be able to confirm their calculations, provided that they provide the base uh, area in which they determine the density problem. Okay. At least some of your testimony involved the municipal separate storm sewer system program, the MS4 yes. program, is that right? Yes, that is correct. And isn't the MS4 program really a township obligation? It is a top township obligation, that is correct. Okay. Under the NPDES stormwater requirements. Um, is an applicant permitted to pollute or further impair a receiving body? I'm sorry, could you repeat the Sure. Under, under the NPDES stormwater requirements, is an applicant permitted to pollute or further impair a receiving body? No. Okay. So if an applicant complies with the NPDES stormwater requirements, isn't it true that a proposed development will not adversely impact the township's ability to comply with the MS4 program? Uh, no, there, there, are, uh, there are steps that, need, that require uh, to be addressed in order for the township to meet the requirements of the, their pollution reduction plan as far as their MS4 study. Uh, and as far as this, uh, there is a, uh, a section of the uh, of the stormwater management ordinance, specifically 144-301.p, uh, subsection one and two, that permits the municipality to impose uh, additional control measures for watersheds listed in, as impaired, which is the case of the Radley Run watershed, which occupies the majority of the site. Right, and I believe your testimony was that under that section, the township could require stream or riparian buffer restoration. That's that correct? correct. Yes. Okay. Isn't it true that section 144.301p of the stormwater ordinance does not even mention the word stream restoration? That is correct. Okay. And also, is this typically something that you would be dealing with during land development and not conditional use? Uh, the the um, the detailed design of the stream restoration, yes, would be a part of land development. I have nothing further for Mr. Flinchbaugh. Thanks, Bob. Okay, one moment. Uh, is Mark Thompson on for Neighbors for Cray Billing? Neighbors for 
Hello? So, is there anyone on tonight for Neighbors for Craybilly? I, I, I believe Mark Thompson was supposed to be on. Uh, Mila, are you seeing him listed? I see Neighbors for Craybilly. I muted them. Let me try it again. They seem to be muted still, Mila. I can see that on my screen. Yep. There they go. No questions at this time. Okay. Can you identify yourself, please? It, Elizabeth and Vince Morrow. Thank you. Township, does Kathy Labram have any questions for the witness? I don't see Kathy Labram on the list. Is uh, Hugh Donahue listed? Yes. That's usually Kathy. Oh, okay. You unmuted? <laughs> Good evening. Uh, no questions for the witness. Thank you. Uh, from Crawford for Birmingham Township. Uh, yes, I have no questions either. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone on for Westchester Area School District? Uh, Mr. Bevelock or Mr. Scanlon? I don't see raised hands. Uh, Randall Spackman told me he was going to be about 30 minutes late this evening. I don't know if he's on yet or not. No, I don't. No. Okay, I'm going to circle back to him in a moment and double check. Uh, Brandywine at Thornberry, HOA. No questions, thank you. Thank you, sir. Could you just identify yourself for the record, please? Brian Karakoff. Thank you, Mr. Karakoff. Uh, Westminster Presbyterian Church. Mr. McFalls? You unmuted? No, no questions. Thank you. Uh, Quarry Swimming Association. I don't see them on the list. Uh, no raised hands. Is uh, Nicholas Bonkowski listed? No. Radley Run 3 HOA, um, Preeti Pinto? Yeah. Here. No questions. Thank you, ma'am. The Arbor View HOA, Mr. Hoffman or another representative? Please raise your hand. No raised hands. West Town Village LP. I believe that was Mr. Gattoletto. I don't see him on the list. Robert Dahl. Not here. Leonard Mamakari? Not here. Philip or Susan Jones? Not present. Not here. Deanna Lararis? Not here. Edwin or Lagita Boyer? Here. No questions at this time. Thank you, sir. Uh, David or Catherine Prize? 
not here. Jennifer Kramer. Yeah. No questions at this time. Thank Mark you. Mark Thompson just joined. Thank you, Pam. I'll circle back and see if he has any questions. Uh, Denny or and Patty McFadden. Not here. Carol Weller. Here. You are muted. It takes a while. Okay. Am I good? Yes. yes. Okay, good. And I also see that uh, after I'm done, Richard Hurst has a question. Um, if you could get back to him. He's on my list, ma'am. He's a little farther down. Oh, I'm sorry. He was answering. He was asking for the quarry. Since uh, when you called the quarry, he was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, my question is, uh, when uh, calculating the percentage of impervious surfaces allowed, uh, is that determined only by the area of the property, or is it also determined by the topography and uh, also the fact that the land has streams running through it. Uh, do the streams have any bearing on the allow allowable impervious services? From a density standpoint, it is based strictly upon area. The information that we are requesting is the area associated with the townhomes specifically, uh, that, that area in which that calculate that calculation was presented needs to be clarified. Okay, so uh, having streams or anything like that uh, doesn't affect the percentage of the allowable services? It, it doesn't from a density standpoint. There are certain areas that are to be included within the open space, but they have been included uh, in the open space as shown by the applicant's plan. So from a density standpoint, as far as calculating density associated with the residential portion, that does not apply. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weller. Uh, William Worth. I see Lori Worth. Uh, I'm speaking for Bill, who's struggling a little bit with his. No questions at this time. Thank you from Bill Worth. Thank you. Bob Williman. Not here. Linda Miller. Here. No questions at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Ellen Deal. Not here. Victor or Carly Malatesta? Not here. David or Iris Berger? Not here. Karen Grime? Here. You're unmuted. Uh, no questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Ernie? Not here. Eve Herrick. Not here. Anthony Simkovich. Here. Uh, no questions, thank you. Thank you, sir. Benton Mejia. Here. I don't have any questions right now. No questions. All right, thank you. Uh, Nicholas Bonkowski, individually, I don't know if he's on yet or not. No, not yet. Dr. Cecilia Wright or William Vosberg? Here. 
Neither of us have a question at this time. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Uh, Richard Hurst or Suzanne Kruger? Here. Uh, no questions at this time, but uh, also if you could put me under the listing for the Quarry Swimming Association. I'm not what's, your, what's your position with the association, sir? I'm the president. Okay. Will Mr. Bonkowski not be coming then? I'm not sure, but I just wanted to make sure in case neither myself or Nicholas. Pat, I just admitted Jackie Bonkowski. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Martin or Renee Rockwood? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James or Susan Mutter? Here. Yeah. Hello, we're both present, but no questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Anne and John Hellion? Here. Yeah. Uh, we have no questions at this time. Thank you, sir. David Teal. Here. No questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Teal. And then Patrick McDonough. Not here. All right, I want to circle back on a couple. I think you passed over Myron Grubaugh. Uh, no, we have Myron and Sharon Grubaugh were here, but they didn't have any questions. Uh, I didn't say that. No? Okay. <laughs> but I have no questions, so. <laughs> but you didn't ask me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Thompson, I think you're on now. Did you have any questions for yeah. now? No questions, Patrick. Thanks, Mark. Fernanda, look at my group here. Oh, ma'am, if you wouldn't mind under Fenton Mejia, please make sure you're on mute. Um, Mr. Spackman, Randall Spackman, I think you're on now. Do you have any questions? Uh, thank you. I was able to hop on. Um, not this time, but thank you. All right. And then finally, uh, Mr. Bonkowski, are you on now? Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, my wife and I are on, but we don't have any questions. Thank you. All right, did I miss any other parties that are here that I didn't call your name? Any other parties that I didn't call your name? If so, please unmute or raise your hand. No raised hands. All right, thank you, uh, Mila, for your help. Uh, Kristen, uh, Ms. Camp, we'll come back to you. Do you have any redirects for uh, the witness? I do, very few. Uh, Bob, I'm, does... I'm, I'm sorry, Kristen, if I can interrupt, shouldn't the board ask some questions first before Kristen does redirect? That's up to the preference of the board. I have three questions. I was just saying, before I would have to do any recross. Well, great. I'll let you have recross. We haven't allowed recross, actually, but I'm aware. Um, let's let Ms. Camp ask her questions, then I'll let the board speak. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Does it Section 144-301U of the Stormwater Ordinance prohibit placement of fill or any excavation within the riparian buffer? Yes, it does. And with the information that's been provided to date by the applicant, are you able to confirm whether the applicant can completely comply with that by not excavating or placing any fill within the riparian buffer? No, we cannot determine that at this time. As of today, have you been given any information or sufficient information to confirm that the townhome portion of the, of the development meets the maximum impervious cover permitted by the zoning ordinance? No, I have not. And in section 144-301P of the ordinance, stormwater ordinance, is it your opinion that stream restoration would be an additional storm protection or stormwater protection measure that the board would be authorized to impose? Yes. I have nothing further. Okay. 
Does the board have any questions for Mr. Finchbaugh? Carol, you go ahead first, Mr. Chair. Um, you need to unmute yourself. Scott, do you have any questions, first off? Uh, I do not. Dick, do you? I do not, no. I don't either. Please move on. Thank you, Mr. Fletchball. I'd like to ask a question for recross. Great, we haven't permitted recross. That the board was completed all their questions. Uh, I understand. Uh, you've had your chance for cross, and we haven't allowed redirect. I did the same for when you were doing your direct. I didn't allow recross. What's yeah. redirect? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what we have done so far, which is you get to one opportunity. You will have the opportunity for redirect, and you can address the issue at that time. Mr. McKenna, Ms. Camp brought up a new question that was not brought up during Mr. Flinchball's direct. I should have a right to cross-examine him on that question. What was the issue? The issue is with respect to Section 144-301.U. That was not in his direct testimony. It was first brought up on redirect. What does Section U cover? Uh, Ms. Camp asked a question regarding placement of fill in a riparian buffer area. And that was brought out on his direct. That absolutely was. What? I have my notes here. I read his, tan his transcript testimony. I did not see Section 144-301U cited in his direct. All right. I don't really want to get into an argument about this, so if you have one question you want to ask, go ahead, Greg. Please. Mr. Flinchbaugh. Isn't it true that determination of amounts of fill and location of fill are typically a construction item that is determined after a plan has been fully engineered? Well, in this case, the, the, the fill in question, we would, we would need to know during the planning process whether the fill would be encroaching within the riparian buffer, and that would be, that we could only determine that by uh, evaluating the grading of the plan. Isn't it true that cut and fill is usually determined during land development, not a conditional use. Uh, cut and fill calculations for earthwork purposes, uh, yes. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, Ms. Camp, do you want to call your next witness? Yes, is Mr. Snook on? I know he was having trouble logging in. Is he on? Yes. Yes, I'm on. I'd like to call Mr. Snook. Mr. Snook, you're going to need to be sworn in by the court reporter. Mr. Snook, would you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Mr. Snook, we previously, at the first conditional use hearings that occurred on the first application, we marked your curriculum vitae as exhibit PC-19. Um, is that, and at that hearing, those first hearings, you were admitted as an expert in land planning. I'm going to offer Mr. Snook for the same purpose for tonight's testimony. Mr. Edelman, any response? Uh, no objection to the qualification as a land planner. Okay. You have an objection to him being admitted as an expert in land planning? I, I have no objection. Thank you. As I say, you so admitted. Thank you. Mr. Snook, do you serve as the Westtown Township land planner? I am a land planning consultant for Westtown Township. And as the township planner, are you familiar with the Westtown Township Code as well as the Westtown Comprehensive Plan, which was adopted in 2019? Yes, I am very familiar with the code, especially as I have recently been assisting township staff in zoning enforcement issues as well as planning issues. And I was a principal author of the comprehensive plan. And are you familiar with the Cray Valley property, which is the subject of this application? Yes. In your capacity as the township planner, did you review the conditional use plans that have been marked Exhibit A68, which are dated August 9th, 2019? Yes, I have. And did you issue a review memo, which is dated October 3rd, 2019, which has been marked as Exhibit B-56. Yes, I did. Did you issue a subsequent review memo dated October 17th, 2019, 
which summarized your key recommendations to the Planning Commission on this conditional use application and plans that has been marked Exhibit B-57. Yes. Did you receive a copy of the Chester County Planning Commission review letter dated October 18th, 2019, which has been marked Exhibit B-53? Yes, I have. And in that County Planning Commission review letter, uh, the county refers to uh, Landscapes 3. What, what is Landscapes 3? Landscapes 3 is the effective current Chester County Comprehensive Plan. And how does the County Comprehensive Plan identify the Crayville track as far as their designations, land use designations? Landscapes 3 has actually a number of designations on or relative to the Crebley tract. First off, it most of the tract is what the landscapes calls the Brandywine Battlefield Overlay Area. According to the county, development within or adjacent to the Brandywine Battlefield should preserve key lands, adaptively reuse, reuse historic structures, and apply context-sensitive design to integrate with distinctive cultural features and the nationally significant cultural landscape. And I realize I'm quoting from the, from landscapes. Um, the county identifies in sort of their base categories, land use categories for the comp plan, landscapes three. Most the western half or more of Crebley Farm is designated as rural landscape and the eastern half or so is designated as suburban landscape. Does, do you believe that the conditional use plans dated August 9th, 2019 preserve areas that the county designates as being within the Brandywine Battlefield Overlay? Um, partially. The county uses Ameri pardon. The county uses the American Battlefield Protection Program map for their preservation area as their mapping of the Brandywine Battlefield. That 